All right, so as we jump into the, to the discussion here, so we're, we've got just a lot to cover. So I'll start just at the top. So when did you guys start thinking about connected television as part of your marketing strategy? And what was kind of the catalyst that kind of got you really focused on CTV as part of your strategy? Kimberly, we'll start with you and then kind of go down the list. Yeah, down the absolutely. Um, a, a few years ago, about uh, three years ago, so Volkswagen started looking into it in, in earnest. I think automotive is a bit different than the other categories here in terms of, you know, we really have to be smart with our dollars. We've got to really look at a, a something that can help us balance out awareness and consideration at the same time. Um, and ultimately, we have a lot of folks that we need to reach that are younger auto buyers and consumers um, that we're cord cutting. And so yeah. really looking into that, uh, like I said a few years ago, was super important for us, and we're all in right now. Oh, wow, that, that's incredible. And then, Paolo, as you guys looked at it from ABI's perspective, how did you come to the conclusion that you were going to get in on CTV? <laughs> for sure. Well, listen, at the beginning, it was absolutely to reach new uh, drinkers and new consumers, younger demos. Uh, and we were fascinated by the idea of you know, informing a lean-back experience like TV with data and with a personalization that you can bring to connected TV, right? So it started a little bit more as a, as a test and iteration of what we were doing two, two or three years ago and then it started becoming having critical mass right today 47 percent of the u.s households don't have, are either cord cutters or cord nevers and therefore now it's a prerogative to getting scale but when you can get you know that data the personalization that targeting with the scale that now it's reaching that is where it becomes now a must have in your media strategy and media mix Absolutely. And then, Jeff, for Colgate Palmolive, like, that's a really interesting stat. So 47% of consumers can't be reached. And so as you look at it from the portfolio of brands at Colgate Palmolive, do you look at that 47% as an important number of people that you've got to talk to, I would assume? Uh, 100%. And that, yeah. that is, uh, it's just, it's overwhelming. And it's so critical because for us, the consumer experience is at the, is at the, fo fo the heart of everything that we do. It's at the heart of our communication. And we realize that in order to get that holistic reach, we have, to, we have to be there. So it really is, okay, we know we have to be there. We know that the, the, the cord cutters, the cord nevers, we know they're there. What's the right experience to bridge it? And, um, and how do we start to test and measure it? What role does it play? So it's definitely connected TV agility. Mm -hmm. That was the um, impetus for us to really you know, start to place our bets there. Yeah, you also said an important um, word there too, which is which is bridging, because we are still living in, in two worlds, right? We're living in a world where linear television does still matter, but connected television is growing really quickly, and AVOD as a subset of connected television is grow is growing dramatically. But how do you guys see that changing over time? Like we're going to be in both worlds for a little while, so linear is going to continue to be a part of the strategy. But how do you guys see that changing? And then maybe as a follow up question, how do you see that impacting? the upfronts, as, as all of you guys are participants in the upfronts mm -hmm. every year. So how do you look at that kind of interplay between linear and CTV and that mix changing over time? And then how does that impact how you think about upfronts? Yeah. Um, maybe we'll come back down the row. And so Jeff, not to, put, not to put you back on the spot, but we'll come back back this way. Yeah. That's OK. Yeah, so uh, it, you know, it's the way, that, the way we're kind of viewing it is linear TV you know, alone, we can't, we can't, get, we can't reach our, our holistic strategy through it, through it by itself. So, it is a combination. Um, and what we're really starting to understand now as we're going deeper into the data that we're using in Connected TV is that we're realizing that a lot of these audiences are, they're unified at various points in the funnel and we just never knew that. So what's really happening is, is with the insights, with the, the data that we're using and certainly, the, certainly what we're seeing coming back, we're, we're taking less bifurcated approach to how we're using linear and, uh, and digital video. They're becoming more harmonized and, and to the degree on a master brand versus a sub-brand level, this is kind of where we're testing those various uh, reach levels and the data that we use. But yeah. they're absolutely, we've seen them converging and we know we're, we're reaching, yes, net incremental, but also some of the same households that we are in our, in our 
when your video buys. Yeah, I love that word harmonizing both of them because it's not an either or, it's how you bring them together and have them work for each other to, to some extent. Do you guys see the yeah. same at ABI? Uh, absolutely, I mean, it's a matter of building a holistic video strategy and that comes with a lot of complexities to it, right? On one side is figuring out the overlap, figuring out how you can have buys that are you know, exclusively or mutually targeted, that can be data informed, that can have you know, the creative relevance and the message relevance from you know from a national to a local level mm -hmm. and bring it all together so now we still have silos we still have fragmentation but the way it was going to come together is to where i think that all of us and all advertisers are going to have to find a way to make it work as the technology as the businesses as the sell side comes along for the journey and you see more of the uh, cross of offering between linear and digital right and digital with extension to linear and all these kind of things i think then the interesting part is going to be how do you balance from a connected TV standpoint, from a digital video standpoint, a couple of factors. One is uh, you can get super targeted, you can be data informed, you can be very creative and once with your creatives, but all of that drives up the CPMs, drives up the cost. And so how do you balance the expected increase in efficiency mm -hmm. with the increase in cost, both in, from a CPM standpoint, when you start layering data, but also in terms of cost, in terms of production, in terms of having multiple creatives, multiple buys and all these kind of things. So striking that balance, that is the art and the science that brings the holistic video strategy together, I think. I love yeah. that. That's great. And I then, would just add to yeah, what please. they've yeah. said, absolutely, that, um, it is a very much a harmony kind of approach and mm -hmm. you have to look at it very holistically. I think sometimes people think it's just going to be linear or, uh, or uh, CTV or, you know, things are not that black and white anymore. Right. And I think, you know, given our campaign, given the audience that we're looking at, video is video, mm -hmm. right? And we tell our dealers that as well, who are also, you know, saying we need to be more in linear TV for these reasons, you know, these connected TV are good for those reasons. We have to look at it as a total approach. And I think consumers see it all as one thing. Yeah. They want to make sure that you're meeting me with the right message that's relevant to me. And again, for automotive, it's more complicated. Yeah. So we want to make sure we're really using those dollars super effectively. And it's something that I think that if we get it right, people feel like it's an add-on and it's more interesting and engaging with that lean-in audience, especially with Connected. Yeah, I, I, I love all, just all of those themes about the, the harmony of both of them, and also just looking at the efficiency and the effectiveness of CTV, because there is going to be a little bit of trade-off often there uh, when, it, when it comes to price. Jeff, you mentioned something earlier about just the importance of agility in campaigns today and being able to adapt kind of on the fly and capture a moment in time and cap put a message into the market that might be relevant um, at that moment. Um, Traditionally, Scatter has played kind of a role in, in doing that. How do you think about the dynamics of like, I want to take advantage of a moment now and then utilizing CTV to do that? And maybe Kimberly, I'll start with you and then go back. Yeah, I mean, for us, I think the scatter market is complicated in terms of we're, we're trying to get that mass reach, we're trying to get flexibility at the same time, we're trying to be much more highly targeted. Consideration is a big thing for Volkswagen especially. Yep. And so if we look at it in totality, I think it's, it's something where scatter is going to be less flexible for us sometimes, mm -hmm. more expensive, and maybe doesn't make as much sense. Um, so again, we have to look at it as a portfolio kind of approach. Yep and figure out where do we need to be at the right time. We, again, follow audience, then we follow screens, then we follow channels. Mm -hmm. And then as far as that, that flexibility, uh, like in the moment, like at ABI, when you think about um, just some of the pricing dynamics, is, is CTV kind of, or maybe I'll ask this slightly different. As you think about Scatter, is CTV part of that, or do you think about Scatter as more of this linear vehicle? Well, I mean, now it becomes a little bit of a semantics, yeah. right? But I think that linear scatter doesn't necessarily register for me in the spectrum of agility, right? Yeah. Or agile, and uh, and it's a you know it's it's a good tool. In a, in a toolbox that you have, right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to CTV, I think it becomes very interesting because any data-enabled channel now is gonna give you the chance of understanding how you know, your buy is performing, how consumer and people are reacting, both in terms of KPI and signals, but also with CTV now you have creatives that can allow you to interact with your audience, right? Mm -hmm. So you can build a really holistic and consumer-centric experience. And then with that, you figure out, okay, what is working and you double down on that versus what you pull back. Yeah. But I think that the most interesting thing about leveraging this capability is the ability of being agile also from a, a creative and production standpoint. Mm. Because in order to do that, you need to have adapt also your creative 
gone are the days where you know you just have a 30 second film that you run for six months, right? Right. That's the thing. If you build consumer centric, you need to have a creative that adapts to what's working and what's not working. And I think that now CTV gives us the opportunity to think again how our production um, workflow and our schedules and our um, you know structure works in order to adapt and again have another version, another iteration of what's working pulling back on what's not working. Right. That I think it's going to be the challenge and the opportunity that CTV and any data form uh, buy is going to give us. Yeah, Jeff, have you guys experienced the same thing where you have this additional layer? Because the creative thing is a really great point, right? Because you have this ability to, to really test and learn because of the agility of CTV. Have you guys experienced the same? Yeah, yeah. I, when I think of agility, I, I'm thinking of it more in terms of, yes, being able to kind of pivot on the fly and make changes and updates and all of that. But I think about agility being more about the multi kind of dimensional capability that CTV can play with audiences mm -hmm. and creating specific journeys for those audiences at different stages of the funnel. Yep. That's where we're really spending a lot of our time right now. Sure, it's a reach play. Sure, it's a, you know, a, a TV replacement for awareness. But what else in the funnel is it doing? And where and then how does that creative and how should that message be different? And what are the right cues and signals to be having it trained to is, I think, what agility means to us when it relates to CTV. But sure, there's absolutely, um, you know, there, there, there's, there's always that ability to stop and start and, and pivot. Oftentimes, you're, you might be going in a wrong direction. Yep. And you'll, you'll, you'll know that. So it, it's great. And yeah, it's similar to what my colleague said. Scatter market is, I don't think that really lives up to the definition of agility as, the, as we think about it. Um, and, the, and the scatter market is just going to get more and more competitive. It's, you know, it's going to move further up and it's just going to become you know, more and more pricier. So um, you know, that's just yeah. the kind of necessary. Yeah, and I think too, just again, given where we are with the world right now yeah. and COVID, and um, especially for automotive, our supply chain issues have been pretty drastic mm -hmm. and very dramatic in terms of how we have to think about going to market. I'm sure it's the same for for yeah. everybody, really. Yeah. But for us, we're now looking at maybe it's another six months or further down the road before things normalize. The pressure for us to be profitable, for the pressure for us to really look at ROI differently, has never been greater. And I think you know this type of new world that we're in with this whole portfolio of connected, addressable, linear, we have to put our dollars where we're going to know the audiences are going to be there. And who knew that digital video, you can test and learn and iterate, to your point, right. uh, really in, in, in midstream of your campaign, especially if you don't have cars to sell, which in our case might be the case. Right. It, it, well, it brings up something, too, which is that you, know, you mentioned this, Paolo, but we talk, we're talking about television becoming a much more data-enabled channel. And so there's data in, but then there's also data out that can help you understand what's working and how you can make sure you're tailoring your investment to things that are effective and efficient, especially in times like like these that you just described, where you have to be smarter with every dollar that's going into your media investment. And so as you think about that data out, I'm really curious about this part too. Like, Have you had insights and data that's coming out of your connected television investment that has really helped inform how you change an overall strategy? Because you're finding a different level of something. I don't want to lead, lead the question here at all, but are you getting that data out in a way that's helping inform the overall strategy? Uh, let's start with you, Paolo. Well, I haven't right, started sure. with you yet. Let's start <laughs> yeah, in the middle this time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, I think that in general, um, connected TV and doing more of you know data-enabled TV allowed us to be a better consumer-centered marketer. And this means that when you actually can get during the flight, during the campaign, data that tells you what's working, what's not working, and also gives you the creative capability of saying, hey, now here's a QR code, go redeem this coupon to get a beer at a, at a bar for, you know, for, for free or whatever uh, activation we might have, or have e-com delivered to you. Mm. Now, that uh, allows you to create that dialogue. And that dialogue is important in the way you craft the campaign and design the campaign. And so actually helped us work very much closer with, um, with the brand teams, with the creative creative agencies and everyone in terms of saying, okay, what is the consumer journey? What is the ecosystem we're creating? And where is Connected TV now playing a role in that ecosystem? And what is the next step? We have an approach, of, uh, one of the rules that we apply when we design campaigns, which is a no dead ends, in terms of saying, okay, I don't want to just expose you know, consumers to my ad, but now I want them to do something, to take an action. Is this going to have an impact? It goes back to the you know, ROI, effectiveness, yep. efficiency, and all these kind of things. And so it, it definitely 
helped us being more consumer centric and think about a consumer journey rather than the old days of just a big brand advertiser broadcasting out a message and that's it, take it or leave it. Right. Jeff, you know, it's a good, I think, maybe segue into uh, maybe a specific example. Uh, do you have a, a, an example of where Colgate Palmolive has taken all of that data and all of those insights um, and actually done this successfully in CTV on a brand or, or anything that you guys have activated on CTV? Yeah, yeah. Earlier in the year, we ran a, a, a connected TV by through the trade desk or DSP to, um, we had a, a linear uh, video um, campaign up for about three months for our optic white uh, toothpaste, uh, and you know we were at a saturation level. Our free, you know, our reach was kind of plateauing, and our frequency was climbing through the roof. So, mm -hmm. our goal was to really come in and use um, use CTV to get that incremental to reach those incremental audiences. Um, and what we quickly learned through the through the through the research and through the insights is that not only were we hitting 58% more incremental reach and 20 mil, almost 20 million households that our linear buy wasn't reaching, but we were actually helping to manage and drive down all that frequency that we were over, uh, way, way over uh, at, on, our, on our linear buy. So yeah, there were a lot of tools and a lot of insights that we were able to pull from that particular buy. Um, and yeah, considered to be very, very successful. And I, I would say it's sort of uh, definitely a, a launch pad for us into kind of how it does connect to TV continue to be a, that vehicle for incremental reach and frequency management when we've plateaued on linear video. Yeah. So. yeah, incremental reach and frequency management are things I hear just so consistently in every conversation that I have almost weekly. Kimberly, have you guys experienced the same thing at VW about just looking at CTV as this vehicle for incrementality and also the frequency management thing? I'm curious your take on that. Yeah, and I was just going to give an example of a campaign we did with yeah. our new electric ID4. Yeah. And um, being able to save those dollars, we were able to look at our total campaign frequency management and reinvest about $4.5, uh, I should say, to reach about 4.5 incremental households as part of that campaign. So the savings can be real, and we wouldn't have reached those folks otherwise. So I think really it, it's all about the total investment dollars that you're looking at, mm -hmm. and then trying to figure out you know, where does it make sense to make a pivot, and what time, and what audience. And for that, we had three different audience sets that we were right. looking at over the course of some time frame. So to be able to do that through the trade desk and do that as a portfolio approach was super, super helpful. That's amazing. And the, you know, as, you, as you run all of these campaigns, another key component to this, and this is a little, a little bit of a, I guess, controversial topic to some extent, but how are we measuring the success of CTV, right? We're in, the, we're in this moment right now where measurement is still kind of being you know, defined to some extent of what that's going to look like in both of these worlds between linear and CTV. When you think about the success of a CTV campaign, how, how are you thinking about what success looks like? Uh, Kimberly, uh, I'll start yeah, with Yeah, definitely targeted reach, for yeah. sure. Um, you know, I mentioned before, awareness is um, a challenge for us, but it's really consideration. Mm -hmm. We need to get households when we know they're going to be in market and ready to buy a vehicle. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, we, we just can't afford it. So right. I think it's, it's been super helpful for us to look at targeted reach um, across the board and CPA. Yeah. yeah. Paul, how do you think about success in CTV? In, in similar way, reach, targeted yeah. reach is obviously important, but also ROI. And I think the, the challenge that we have with uh, when a new channel comes on is connecting the tactical KPIs with the macro level mm -hmm. KPIs, right? And understanding what works, right? Uh, and this is because in a holistic video approach, now you have, yes, you have linear TV, you have connected TV, but also I would argue you have YouTube with bumpers and all these kind of things. You have stories that some kind of, you know, passive consumption that you can have in a full screen environment, a few inches from your face. And so I think that the challenge is going to be how do I, you know, put them all together, manage the channels in a way that the KPIs are telling me a story and I can optimize, but at the same time, I bring it up to a level and I can measure the ROI of that investment, the reach that the investment is giving, and what it's doing in my overall campaign and my overall strategy. So, um, it, and I think that with the multiple layers that we have in terms of trading, in terms of buying, CT, TV and reconciling everything that we do, um, we, we, we have multiple challenges ahead of us that we need to figure out. Yeah, sure. definitely. As far as measurement and just how you think about success in CTV, Jeff, what have, what have you guys Yeah, I mean, similar, similarly, it's reach in ROI, but yep. you know, it's, it's, we also have to resist that urge to, to, to try to paint every tactic 
as being you know, tied to ROI, right? So when we're thinking about exactly what the role of it is in, in, in the funnel, we, we, we really try to measure it not just quantitatively by obviously, you know, how much you reach and what, you know, what is our, our view rate and all of those kinds of things and what's happening as a result of that, of that action, but also qualitatively. What's the experience like, mm -hmm. right? That's something that we, that we, that we watch and we measure. Uh, we started to employ new kind of uh, measurement tools like authentic attention, you know, to really start to go in deeper to our CTV buys and understand our pub from publisher to publisher, you know, are they, are they the same? Is that experience the same, right? Because I think, you know, as marketers and connected TV, we focus on content so much, but we're not focusing on the ad experience. And there's certain things that we all can't necessarily control, you know, but the things that we can control and the places that we show up, we can and we are at Kogi Palmolive going deeper into those placements to understand the relative, um, um, you know, success or the relative importance of one publisher versus another. That's yeah. also been a game changer for us. That's fantastic. So. I'm, I'm getting the, uh, the notice here on our, on our screen. So we have 90 seconds, it looks like. So with, with 90 seconds, I'll close out with a prediction. So I'll, I'll make a bold statement here, and I'll get your guys' reaction. So I believe that in three years, the majority of TV ad spend is going to have moved to a programmatic, data-driven kind of mode in connected television. So agree or disagree, in three years, we're going to be connected, programmatic, data-driven for the majority of television. Agree or disagree? I'll start with you, yeah. Kimberly. Uh, fully agree, and we're already on our way at Volkswagen. Fantastic, Paolo. I agree, hope it's going to be earlier, and I'll actually double down by saying that probably it's going to be the data and the connective and the holistic video strategy is going to be one of the main topics of the next year's upfronts. I think so too. Jeff, for the I, close. I, I yeah. agree, I think, I think two years is the number, so I'm going to go, I'm going to go right in the middle there and all say right. uh, I'm pretty confident We'll wager about that. here. All right, yeah, I'm going to write all these down now, and we'll, we'll put we'll I'll take some money old. down later. Uh, all right, so two years, I love it. Well, thank you guys so much. This was a fantastic discussion. I think we covered everything in a relatively short 25 minutes. We got it all done. Thank you guys all so much for participating today. Thank you all for being here. Thank you. Um, and thank you to Adweek. <laughs>